Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Hatsu 2024 is over, the Kaiju is champion once again, and it is time to brew up some instant bonzuke. This one is going back to the whole, I haven't had any time to look at this, so this is going to be a legitimate first draft of the bonzuke. Some of this stuff I'm gonna look back at in a few weeks and be like, what was I thinking? But hey, that's what a draft is for, right? So let's get some math done and then get into it. That's the math done. Now, as you can see at the top, we've got 41 out of 42 slots filled in Makauchi. What this essentially means is that although they could make a different decision, most likely all of the guys from Jurio who are able to be promoted will be promoted. And then we gotta figure out one guy who is going to fill in that last slot. It's almost certainly gonna be someone who is in Makauchi who could be demoted but won't. They could make a different decision. I, I doubt they will, but we'll get into that. Let's look at the top of the division first because that part's easy. Terra no Fuji, number one guy. He won the U Show. He's a Yokozuna. He stays where he is. The Ozeki. Kota Nawaka is definitely going to get promoted. He got his 13 wins. There's no question about this. So as the guy who is being promoted into the Ozeki rank, he's going to go with the back of the line. Because of that, Takakesho, despite only getting two wins, is going to get a quote-unquote promotion. He's not really getting promoted, he's still the number four guy in line, but he's going to get bumped over to Ozeki 2 East because there's an even number of Ozeki, so he doesn't have to get shifted over to even out the numbers. At Sekiwake, I'm just moving Wakamoto Haru up to Sekiwake 1 West because he is by far the only option. Kota Nawaka vacated the spot by being promoted to Ozeki, so it needs to be filled, and Wakamoto Haru is the guy, right? Daisho was already in the rank, so he'll get bumped back over to Sekiwake 1 East. Wakamoto Haru goes behind him at West. We're fine. And now we get to the stuff that's interesting. Who's going to be the Komasubi? So the first guy is clearly going to be Abi. Even though he only finished 8 and 7, he's miles ahead of anyone else who has a claim to the rank. So he's going to be Komasubi 1 East. There's no question there. But now, is it going to be Nishikigi or Asanoyama that gets the other Komasubi slot? Mathematically, they're even. So I'm looking up their records real quick in case that might make a difference. And it's Terano Fuji and Daisho as Senyaku opponents for Nishikigi. And uh, uh, Sanayama only faced Daisho, although he also fought Atami Fuji. Overall, if you just look at the ranks of their opponents, Nishikigi would seem to have had the somewhat more difficult schedule, which you'd expect for the guy at the higher rank. So even though Sanayama was clearly more impressive and he managed to put himself in this conversation despite missing some days, the fact that he missed some days really shouldn't play into it. It should just be... How many wins did you get? What was your rank? That's the calculation. Neither of them are even close to really quote unquote earning this slot. So if they're going to pick the guy who looks more capable of being an effective Komasubi, they have to pick a Sanoyama, but they don't usually think like that. They think along the lines of, you know, who's supposed to get it based on what happened. So I kind of think they're going to give it to Nishikigi. I'm happy to be convinced otherwise by uh, some kind of argument that I'm not thinking of. But for now, I'm going to put Nishikigi here. Now after that, what comes next? Does Ura, who is ahead of everybody else, only get bumped down a half a rank to Maegashira 1 East? Maybe, but I kinda doubt it. In the last 20 years, no Komasubi, at least Komasubi West, who's had a 6-9 and nine record, has ever just been demoted to Maegashira 1 East. Now this is kind of a weird scenario, so we shouldn't assume anything, but it makes perfect sense that you bump Aura down just one rank and then let Asanayama come up to Maegashira 1 East, where he was before. Again, that shouldn't be the reason you do it, but it really doesn't matter. Maegashira 1 East and West tend to have about the same schedule, so let him get the big jump. I think this is probably how they line it up. Again, I'm open to arguments that Aura might be the one that goes in front, but it's gotta be these two at Maegashira 1 East. Again, unless Asanayama and Nishikigi get swapped. Similarly, Atami Fuji is the next guy in line, 
but he's gonna go to Maegashira 2 East on a six and nine record, only a half rank drop. This one is more plausible. They do do this sometimes. It's not common, but remember, not even a year ago, Kota Shoho went six and nine at uh, Maegashira 5 East and just got bumped back to Maegashira 5 West because the circumstances allowed for it. In this case, you have to think it's a similar situation. Toby Zaru is going to be at Maegashira 4 East that's pretty much a given, and there's absolutely no one else even close to Atami Fuji. Meisei and Oho are both a full two ranks behind him mathematically. So it does look like Atami Fuji is only going to suffer a half rank demotion. Is this going to be good for him? Well, it'll be good for his experience, sure. Hopefully he figured out a few things in this Basho fighting a much higher level of competition all the way through, and he can make use of that next time. As far as Meisei or Oho going to 2 West and the other to 3 East, for you guessed the Banzuke players, this is a really important decision because this is a lot of points on the line. But as far as what's more fair, they're both getting incredibly overpromoted, so there's not really a right or a wrong answer here. This is what I think right off the bat. They're going to put Meisei at 2 West because he is a little more proven at this level, but even more so, they're just sick of Oho's shit. They see him come and fight, and then not fight, and then fight, and then not fight, and I think they view him kind of like Hokuseiho, like what is this kid doing? And even though, as I'll probably say a few times during this video, they shouldn't make a decision on this basis, I think this is an occasion where they might let that sway them that little bit. They'll bump him back, that half a rank, give Meisei the promotion over him, but they're both going to jump a huge amount. Now we got another interesting tie down here at Maegashira 7. Kinbozan was 7 and 8 at Maegashira 6. Pretty much a given, barring some very, very interesting decision making, that uh, he's going to stay at Maegashira 6 East. There just aren't enough people to push him down. So where does Midori Fuji go? Takano Show is going to get a pretty fat over promotion. So where does Midori Fuji end up? Well, he was Maegashira 2 East. Do they put him at Maegashira 3 West, only one and a half ranks down on a 5 and 10 record? It's worth noting that a couple years ago, Toby Zaru was 5 and 10 at Maegashira 2 West and only got bumped down one rank to Maegashira 3 West. So they will do this if they feel it's appropriate. So let me move these guys into position. We put Takano Show here. That's a pretty big jump for Maegashira 12. Again, I, I am open to the idea that maybe they shift things around. Maybe they just don't want to leave Toby Zaro in place. And so they put Takano Show up here and then Midori Fuji to Fort East and Toby Zaro back here. That seems really wrong, though. That seems like they're just doing the guy dirty as hell. Uh, I think it'd be more likely that just Takano Show and Midori Fuji are going to be on the west side. It's just who's three and who's four. At the moment, I am going to guess Midori at three west. I think in days past, it, was, it would be more likely to be Midori Fuji. Now, I think it's a lot more 50-50. I'm going to have to think this one over. I'm really not sure. I'll leave it like this for now, though. Okay, if Kinbozan is stuck at Maegashira 6 East, then here to Umi, 8 and 7 at Maegashira 8 West, he is jumping into the edge of the joy. Not quite there, but if there's an injury or two, he's gonna, wow, he's gonna have to fight some diesel ass dudes. Oh, poor bastard. Now, he looks like he's a little more ready for the bigger guys now, but not to the point where I would feel particularly confident if Teru has to sit out and say, Asaniyama ends up out as well then he's probably going to get run over. Yeah, you know, we'll see. 5 East is, is very much a wild card rank. This could go a lot of ways for him. Gono Yama was really disappointing at Maegashira 3 East. So the 2.5 rank drop to 5 West, that seems fair enough. That seems reasonable. Again, in the past, I would take that basically as a given, and then Tsurugisho would end up behind him. But in this case, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, they might be more likely to push Tsurugisho ahead. But if they take into consideration at all the likelihood that these guys will be competitive at these ranks, I think Gonoyama stays ahead. He has proven himself to be capable of winning matches against the higher level guys. Tsurugisho is probably going to get absolutely spanked in March. This is just way above his level. I love how much fight he shows. I love how he's able to find ways to get things done despite his knees being so rickety. But Maegashira 6 West in March is probably going to be too much, and 5 West would be potentially even worse. Onosato gets a pretty clean jump to Maegashira 7 East, so hey, he's not in the joy yet, but no one expected him to get there without actually winning the tournament, which was probably never going to happen. Tamawashi and Onosho slide up behind him. Those are pretty clean. 
Hokuto Fuji, he was injured, so he'll drop 5 ranks with his 4 wins and under demotion, but not too bad for him. Now Takeyasu, injured at Komasubi, does he stay ahead of Kota Shoho? Probably. I think there's actually more of an argument to be made that Takeyasu ends up even higher than this. So let's put Kota Shoho at Magashira 9 East. Where could Takeyasu go that would make sense? If you're gonna bump him up at all, probably the most logical place to put him is gonna be at Maegashira 7 East. And then Onosato gets bumped back, and Tamawashi gets bumped back, and Onosho gets bumped back, and Hokuto Fuji gets bumped back. But they all end up higher than where the math says they should go, which is a really good way to figure out where an injured and could drop really far Komitsubi is gonna end up. He could even end up ahead of Surugisho, although I wonder if they're gonna drop Surugisho and not Gonoyama? Here's an idea. This one actually seems plausible as well. Takiyasu to 5 West, Gonoyama to 6 West, and Surugisho to 7 East. Mmm, I think that actually looks pretty good. And that actually fits the fact that Kinbozan mathematically should be ahead of Gonoyama. I think I like this. They could even put Takiyasu ahead of Hiro Umi, but given that they seem to have been showing a little bit of love to winning records, maybe they don't quite do that. But Takiyasu and Hiro Umi swapping at uh, Magashira 5, from what I have here, is also pretty reasonable. This does not seem like a situation where they're going to make Takiyasu plummet too far. He's probably going to end up reasonably high, not quite in the joy, but just outside it. And that's pretty good when you only get two wins. Shodai gets saved a little bit, only five and a half down on his four wins, but man, I've never seen anyone look more done with this sport than Shodai does right now. It's like, you watch him lose a fight and walk off the dohyo, at least when he was in Ozeki, it's like, oh, maybe he's just losing confidence that he's at this level. Now it's like, why am I doing this? And bear in mind, one of those four wins was against Terano Fuji. This dude is even weirder now than he was in the past when I used to call him the Sato Zeki and wonder what the hell was going on with him. I, I don't understand. I don't understand at all. Ichiyamamoto and Mitake Yumi. I suppose if you go by strength of schedule, you have to put Ichiyamamoto in front, but yet again, they have had a tendency to prefer the guys with more wins, so maybe Mitake Yumi goes in front. I guess we'll put Mitake Yumi in front at 10 West and then Ichiyamamoto at 11 East. This is one of those ones, again, uh, if you're against the Bonsuke player and it does come down to this, there's a right answer and a wrong answer, but it's kind of hard to tell which one is going to be right and which one is going to be wrong. And your positioning on the leaderboard is going to depend a lot on whether you get those four points or not. So cross your fingers and hope for the best, I suppose. This one's tough to call. Similarly, Sada Naomi and Shona Naomi. Shona Naomi, what the hell happened to this guy? He looked like he was a broken man for 11 days and then was like, no, I know how to sumo, bah, and just came through and started stomping on dudes. I, I don't get it. For four days, he looked like the guy who actually deserved to be at the rank he was at. Now he's going to drop way back. And where it looked like he might end up just cratering right out of Makauchi, now he looks like he might be a really good pick in the next Basho, because he's going to be at a rank that he should be able to do really well at, right? I, I don't understand. Anyway, for the Banzuke, if we put Mantaki Umi ahead of Ichiyamamoto, I suppose it makes the most sense to put Sada no Umi ahead of Shonen no Umi. Now, the one difference here is that they might decide that Sada no Umi should get more than a one rank decrease, and that would be a reason to put Shonen no Umi ahead of him. I think they're probably going to end up having Mataki Umi and Sada no Umi winning these ties, or Ichiyamamoto and Shonen no Umi winning these ties. And it isn't even like they're purposely trying to be fair. It's just going to be what is their mindset? Ah, these guys did better, we'll put them in front. Ah, these guys did were higher rank, we'll put them in front. They're probably just going to treat them the same way as a default mindset. So for now, I'll put Sada no Umi in front, but just bear in mind that these two pairs of guys, Mataka Yumi Ichi and Sada no Umi Shonen no Umi, are tied and can flip-flop either way. Now, we got a big fat tie here, and Nishiki Fuji isn't even part of it, because he's coming up from Jurio, we gotta treat him separately. But given how they treated Onisho last time, I don't see any reason at all why Shimizu Umi wouldn't just go straight to 12 West here. Now, does Ryudin get pushed to 13 West and Chorin Umi gets no demotion at all? I am inclined to think they're going to give Chorin Umi some kind of a demotion, which means he's 13 West and Ryudin to 13 East, but I feel fairly confident Shimizu Umi will be in front, and then you just got to decide which of these guys are at which 13 slot. There's a logic for them to go either way with it. I just think that there being a clear way for them to hand out a demotion to Chorin Umi that they'll do it. And now we've got the Mio Giryu question. 5 and 10, where does he go? 
in order to answer that, we may need to answer the next question, which is, well, if we still need another guy in Makauchi, who is that going to be? Bear in mind that even though I have Miyogiri listed at 17 West, that's purely for mathematical purposes, there is not going to be a 17 West in the next Basho. Because Kotonowaka is now in Ozeki, there's going to be 9 Sanyaku, so 17 East will be the bottom rank. My inclination is to think that even though Toki Hayate is a half a rank ahead of Endo, because he didn't push himself into Makauchi, Endo is going to be saved. He'll stay in the division. So if we put Miyogiryu and Endo at the bottom of the division, what does all this look like? Well, we'd have to move Kitanowaka up, and then Takeru Fuji would go up. Dayamami and Roga would also have to go up, and then Miyogiryu to 16 West and Endo to 17 East. While this does make sense and Miyogiryu and Endo are getting under demoted in this sense, I am not at all convinced that they're going to put these guys behind a Jurio 1 East that barely squeaked out a Kachikoshi on day 15, and a Jurio 3 East who looked like a killer for a while and then showed his shortcomings over the last week of the Basho. Again, that shouldn't matter when they got their wins and losses shouldn't matter, but these are two guys who squeaked, squeaked, squeaked into the division, and I don't know that they're going to put them ahead of two Makauchi mainstays who can be given smaller demotions and still have it look decent. So let's put Miyogiryu at, at 15 West, Endo at 16 East, and then put Roga and Dayamami underneath them. In fact, let's swap Roga and Dayamami because that seems more like what they're going to do. I could be wrong, but that feels more correct. Now, do they put the Yusho winner from Jurio, who was phenomenal, but who was also Jurio 10 ahead of these Makauchi guys? Well, let's change this and see what it looks like. Let's put Miyogiryu over here at 15 East, Endo at 15 West, and Takeru Fuji at 16 East. So let's also consider Takeru Fuji, so th having three more wins than Nishiki Fuji and Kitanawaka means he gets six more ranks of promotion power, but that still puts him behind both of those guys. Now, if you wanted to split them up according to how far apart they are in terms of earned ranks, you would probably put Kitanawaka behind Miyogiryu and Endo as well, but I'm not sure that Miyogiryu and Endo can hope for any less of a demotion than two and two and a half ranks. The more I look at this, the more I'm thinking that this is what they might do in the past, but now I think they might be more likely to put Takeru Fuji in front. Again, not sure. I feel fairly confident that Roga and Dayamami are going to be at the bottom of the division, and Miyogiryu and Endo will be ahead of them. Just where is Takeru Fuji in relation to Miyogiryu and Endo? That's really the big question here to me. But however it works out, that's Makauchi, and I feel fairly safe in saying these are going to be the guys who make it. So let's move down to Jurio and see what we've got. So this one has a lot of names to deal with, and as you can see at the bottom, we got a lot to think about with the tradeouts between Jurio and Makushita. But let's just start at the top and figure out what we have. First of all, Toki Hayate, are they going to put him at Jurio 1 East ahead of the guys who are coming down? They might. Last time, there were two guys, Dayamami and Mitoryu, who calculated to Jurio 1, and they stayed there ahead of the guys who were coming down, but there was a slightly bigger gap between them and the guys being demoted from Makauchi than there is here. In this case, Toki Hayate is only a rank ahead, and Tohakuryu is only half a rank ahead of two guys coming down. I think the real question here, and where this decision might turn, is Mitoryu can't get demoted that far. I mean, he could, but they probably won't. And Tohakuryu's got to get some kind of a promotion from 2 West. So if you were to bump these guys back, if you bumped Toki Hayate back and Tohakuryu to Jurio 2 East, if Hokuseiho and Takarafuji are effectively tied, who goes to Jurio 1 East and then who ends up at Jurio 3 East? I don't think that's a decision you can really make. Similarly, if you leave Toki Hayate in front, but you want to put Tohakuryu back, how are you supposed to do that fairly? You put Hokuseiho to Jurio 1 West, and then Takarafuji back to Jurio 3? No, that's not going to work either. So it seems more likely that they're going to do Tohakuryu at Jurio 1 West, and then figure out how to split up Hokuseiho and Takarafuji in whatever they think is fair. They could even theoretically 
put like Midori or Midori Fuji, uh, Mitoru at Jurio 2 East, just give him a more minimal demotion and then just bump all the Makauchi guys down. But that seems less likely. That doesn't seem quite right. It, it seems more likely that they're just going to give Mitoru his full rank demotion, possibly even a rank and a half to make space for the guys coming down. But in either case, I'm going to guess Hokuseiho stays ahead of Takara Fuji because he was injured and Takara Fuji just looked like kind of a mess. But they also seem like they don't want to do Hokuseiho any favor, so I could be wrong here. It doesn't really matter that much as far as the draft goes. You can flip these guys around however you want. I'm just saying because they would have to split up the Makauchi guys a little too much if they did otherwise, the guys who have calculated to Jurio 1 will stay there. Kagiyaki and Oshoma slot in nicely at Jurio 4. Hakuyozan and Shirokuma. Do they give Shirokuma? Eh, no, let's just move Hakuyozan over. I don't think it's really going to matter. Shirokuma is like half the time he is the polar bear that his name suggests and half the time he's poo. Like he's just soft and round and likes to be pushed. I don't understand him. He seems like he should be able to do a lot better than he does. But that's not what we're talking about right now. Right now we're just talking about where they'll end up on the Banzuke. And I think Hakuyozan ends up ahead of him. Shioshoma slides very cleanly to Jurio 6 East. Bushozan, so look. I suppose Bushozan could get pushed ahead of Hakuyozan or Shirokuma if they're willing to put Hakuyozan back at 6 West. So we'd have to look something like this. They're not going to demote Chiyoshoma any further than this. So would they put Bushozan here and then Hakuyozan here? Hmm, that's actually... Let, let's get Hidenoumi and Daishoho out of the way. So Hidenoumi and Daishoho, we'll just put them up at Jurio 7. That seems reasonable enough. We carry on. Yeah, Bushozan to Jurio 5 East, coming down from Akauchi, so he gets under demoted. Shirokuma, 8 and 7, he gets his rank. Hakuyozan, 10 West, he gets four ranks on 10 and 5. That's pretty good. Yeah, that actually seems pretty plausible. And then Chiyoshoma gets his normal demotion. Okay, that works. Asakoryu goes up his one rank. Shishi goes down his one rank. Absolutely fine. And now we get to the under demotions. Thomas Shoho seems like an easy pick to just get demoted five ranks so that Shimano Umi and Shiden get actual somewhat decent demotions rather than just a single rank. Shimano Umi to nine west, Shiden to 10 east. Osho Umi is going to get a nice little bump after a rough start, so he'll go up to 10 west. Koto Echo just, 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 just put himself in a position to be safe from demotion, and because he's ahead of all the guys getting dropped out, he clearly goes to 11 east. And yes, I say clearly, despite Wakataka Kage, we'll get into that in a second. Akawa, the last guy mathematically at Jurio 14, rather than coming up or getting demoted way out of the division, he'll get, ooh, ooh, half a rank? Ooh, that seems unlikely. I think he goes minimum to Jirio 12 East. Aoyama going over at Maigashira. Obviously, he could technically be demoted all the way out of Jirio, but they're not going to do that. So we'll put him at 11 West. That seems, you know, fair enough. They might put him ahead of Kotoeko. Uh, they might give him even more of, a, of an under demotion. But at this point, what we're really thinking about is who's leaving the division and who's coming in. Aoyama is clearly going to be in Jirio, and since Guess the Banzuke doesn't worry about Jirio, we're just going to leave that there. It's probably close. So now who comes up? Well, who's definitely going to come up? Wakataka Kage, yes, absolutely. Sushi Minata, yes, definitely. Hakuoho, yeah, you gotta figure he will. Because Tochi Musashi, he went 5 and 10 at Jurio 14 West. He's done, he's out, he's gone. Yuma, 5 and 10 at 13 East, he's gone. Tenshoho, 5 and 10 at 12 West, he's gone. Chiyo Sakai and Chiyo Maru are the two guys who should be gone by any kind of math, but we gotta look at this a little more closely. So let's get Tochi out, Yuma out, Tenshoho out. Okay, Wakataka Kage is going to be in, Sushi Minata is going to be in, Hakuoho is going to be in. Those three guys are going to replace the three that have to go. So now, Kitaharima or Onokatsu? Kitaharima is kind of an interesting case. And by the way, this dude is a great story. The last time he was in Jurio was in 2017. He's 37 years old. He's still grinding. He was in Sandanme for a minute. Won the U show, shot right back up, and now he's in a position to get promoted. So what they'll do with Jurio and Makushita is they'll give higher end Makushita guys who are possibly in line for a promotion matches against Jurio guys who are in line to be demoted. Now on day 15, these are often considered just trade fights, like whoever wins is the one that gets the Jurio spot. But earlier, like day 13, 14, the guy in Makushita is usually fighting for the promotion spot, but the guy in Jurio can often still save himself. 
In this case, Kitaharima's last two matches were against Jurio guys. He lost to Yuma, but Yuma's going out, and he beat Akawa, but Akawa should stay in. So what do we do with him? Because now we're comparing him against two of the guys he didn't fight. He should be considered ahead of Onokatsu in priority. So is 4-3 and three at Makushita 2 West enough to get ahead of a guy who is 6-9 and nine at uh, Jurio 14 East? I am inclined to think yes. Uh, I definitely, spoiler alert, a lot of people on the Sumo Forum who I look to for advice, I did see them talking about this leading up to the last day, thinking that Kitaharima would get priority here, and it does seem correct. So for now, let's bump Chiyo Sakai out of here. And now Onokatsu or Chiyomaru. Do they let Chiyomaru stick around with just a two and a half ranked emotion when there's a six and one guy who's looking like a killer at Makushita 8 East? Thing is, at Makushita 5, maybe 6, once you get below that, going six and one tends not to be the thing that lets you into the division unless you have to replace somebody. And they do not have to get rid of Chiyomaru. They could, but they don't have to. Now, if you're a guest of the Bonzuke player, obviously this doesn't matter. If you're just curious and you're trying to get this right, they announced the Makushita promotions well before the Bonzuke ever comes out, so you'll know who's coming up. And if Onokatsu and Kitaharima are both on the list, you'll know Chiyomaru's going down. But as a guest for now, I think they're probably going to save Chiyo and leave Onokatsu back in Makushita for one more. So we'll kick Onokatsu out, and that's our Jirio division. The only question here is, do they put Chiyo any higher up? Maybe he goes to 14 East and Kitaharima goes to 14 West. I don't think it really matters that much. You know, now that I look at it this way, this seems more correct, only because Chiyo Maru is the veteran and they're gonna give him that one last chance of maybe saving himself in a miracle situation with a seven and eight. Whereas Kitaharima is basically going to need a winning record. Yes, seven and eight can stay in place, but that's not likely. But really, both of these guys are going to be looking at, we need winning records or bust. While the rest of us look at Wakataka Kage and Hakuoho and say, oh my god, Jirio is going to be amazing this time. All right, that is our instant Banzuke for Haru 2023. What do you think? Like I said, I am open to logic that goes against what I have here. So if you have some ideas, please, please, please leave them in the comments. Other than that, you know how it is. Fantasy tier list recap coming soon. The yeets are being worked on trying to do something a little more arty looking this time we'll see how that goes making final decisions on the next breakdown if you have some ideas for guys you want to see a breakdown of throw that in the comments i might also put up a post on the community section so keep an eye out have a great day and i'll see you soon